What's happening allotment freaks? I've got quite a bit done these last couple of days. I've not filmed a great deal of it, but I'll take you on a little walk round and we'll have that for this week's video, eh? So, uh, hold on tight, because it's time for another rip-roaring adventure of Jay at plot number 12. See you in a bit. In the greenhouse these pak choy they're doing brilliantly every time i come they seem to have doubled in size they're doing great that's my best brassica so far uh everything else is a bit hit or miss uh i just moved the bigger ones out of the way uh to get the, the, the smaller ones get a bit more light but uh like you say the purple sprouting broccoli it's coming along i'd wish it were better a couple of the kohlrabis are doing really well a few are doing terrible Couple of smaller pak choys. Uh, I need to get some more cauliflowers in because I've only got them four, them four all year round cauliflower, and there's only one that's doing well. These are the French beans. Only sowed them the other week, about ten days ago. They're doing brilliantly. No sign of the comfrey up top yet. We'll wait and see what happens. These one, two, three, four trays. They're all alderman peas couple of leaks there at the neighbourhood going spare we'll see if they come to out I think there was four originally two are still going uh, underneath here I've got cordessa cabbage more cauliflower that I haven't took very well and them on the end that's stromboli that's took well under this one it's beetroot and cave nero kale it's coming along this was our pepper now it's not doing great but it's not doing terrible either so i don't think we're far off them coming in these what are these these are dwarf swift they're swift dwarf french beans they're doing great like i said they were 10 all the peas and beans went in about 10 days ago and they're all doing great under it is the tom thumb lettuce and very miss on the germination on them and i've put some more in Leaks, giant Daverno two. They're coming on all right now. Peas with a French name that I can't pronounce. Three trays of them. They're doing great. Sweet peas look absolutely terrible. Cornflowers look absolutely terrible. Bargain herbs. Yeah, they're all on whoopsie and as through a while ago. Some have lived, some have died. They're a ten p a pot. We'll see what happens. Right, so out here, that bed and that bed, uh, red onions, they're doing terribly. They're miles behind everything else. I've just had a feel around and there's there's nothing on the bottom of them. Don't know what's going on there, they're just not great. Them two beds at the top, they're uh, white onions, they look good. Same again, them two. And then them two are garlic. Uh, they're looking good. I've had a feel around though, nothing much is bulbing up. Still nothing under the cover. I was going to put carrots in. I might put parsnips in under them. But we'll see what the weather's like next week before we put anything more in the ground, I think. There's nothing in there. I've just got that spare greenhouse. The one I picked up for free for the glass. I'm going to put that frame together. I'm going to use it as a brassica cage, I think. Now, it's wide enough to go overall for, to, for the width and them two beds next to each other, but it's a bit shorter, so we might see what we can rig up with that. But yeah, I'm gonna, when I get when I get chance, we'll build a brass cage with that. What's gonna be the composting area? It's just a little storage area at the minute. We'll see what we can do when we get time for building that up. But like I said, the majority of composting ain't gonna happen till end of the year, so we've got plenty of time. Yeah, so around the pond, it's not that minute, the minute, all the bulbs are starting to come up. Uh, daffodils are coming up. We've got what else? We've got we've got gladioli, misty bulbs, and lilies as well coming up there. Uh, my order of perennials should be coming from. Did we order them off Thompson and Morgan? That should be coming soon. So the rest of the area will get filled with them. We have got some palm plants in. Uh, they only went in yesterday. The cold last night, they're struggling a bit. But uh, I'll come right. We got. 
a white, just water lily, just a white one. We got dwarf sea wart, which is the this one on the left, yeah, that one there. And then we got a Calipha polypetala. That's the one on the right. It sort of looks a bit like a lily, but it's not. I know, oh, it's there happening. So, they're all in. That's looking well. I'm going to get a few weeks, and then we might see about getting a fish for in the pond, and we'll see what goes on with that. <laughs> Furrows are all done for the potatoes to go in. Uh, oh, sorry, we need two. I've got, got the, uh, the wolf cart and ridger. I got one of them. It's decent. Uh, I think with the, I used it with the wooden handle though. It gets a bit of a wobble on. And you see a few of the lines go a bit on piss. But uh, no, it's it's decent, decent tool. Flew through all that. Like so it's a good couple of passes to get that deep. But the, that's there. I think I'm going to put the potatoes in on Friday. So yeah, after work on Friday, we'll put the potatoes in. Rhubarb's coming up. And then all the current bushes are all slowly, well, the top end slowly coming into life. And then the further you get down this end, the deader it gets. Nothing's happening with that one. Both the apple trees are sprung into life. Nothing's happening with that one and that one. And then the blueberry, you can just about make it out there. That's ticking over. And then this is the last big job that we got done so there was all it was, I was just keeping stuff on there it looked a bit of a mess uh, it was always it's all i've always had it planned that we're gonna make that a lawn a nice little sitting bit in front of the shed so we got all that cleared i turned uh, dug everything out of it turned it over with a rotavator and then raked it to some sort of level and I'm just letting it weather in and then end of the month middle of next month we'll get some grass seed down on it so. Right, right guys there's not an awful lot left now that's everything we've got done yeah probably should have filmed a bit more of it but at the end of the day i was getting on with it and got it done it's done now so that's that uh, i'm noticing a lot of mare's tails coming up in a few places so i was just having a tidy up of the greenhouse sorting out the i was just turning over the top of the raised bed to be fair uh I keep giving it a water every now and again, just to try and keep moisture in it. Uh, but no, so I so say we, we do have a mare's tail problem on the site here. Uh, it's something we're gonna have to live with. Uh, unfortunately, it's just how it is, isn't it? If, uh, if everyone cracked on and wanted to dig, you know, two meter deep trenches to dig it out, but it's, it's not realistic, is it? Uh, but it's it's surprising how quick it grows. So like I said, the the raised bed here in the greenhouse, it's what foot and a half deep, sort of. Well, it's a foot and a half high up off the ground. Uh, we had the compost. When did we have the compost delivered? About a month ago now. And look at this. I don't know if you can see that there. This little thing. That is mare's tail poking its head through. So I've just spent the last 20 minutes just turning the top over, having a look through. And there's a few little patches. It all seems to be up this end where the door is, where the bulk of it is. Uh, there's a good few strands coming up. Now I've gone about two foot down and it's, I've not hit the root, the, the main root. You know, it's sort of, there'll be one main root going along and all these shoots come up off it. Now I've not, I've gone two foot down and not hit the main root. So that's through all the compost and into the, the soil, which is for, for a good eight months, add black covering over the top of it. And then once the coverings were taken off, yeah, it was left uncovered for a while. And like you say, it's come up that quick. So, yeah, within a month of having the compost in the greenhouse, the mare's tail's through the top of it. So, like I say, I'm still going to look into seeing if we can find some sort of use for it. I think what I've dug out of here, I might bottle it up, bottle it up, and fill, fill a bottle up with water, sit it all in it, and we'll get the water tested for see what. I'll leave it a week, two weeks, a month, however long. And we'll get the water till we'll get to see what what test kits we can find and uh we'll test the water to see if it's got it if it's 
put any nutrient value into the water. So I'm just going to carry on digging through this, getting the worst of it out. Like I say, if I take the majority of the... If I go down as far as... I, so sort of going down to the bottom of the raised bed and then taking it off there. And hopefully if we keep doing that, it'll stop coming up here. Well, that's the hope anyway, so... So that's how far we've gone down. If you look, I'm deeper than the trout, than the fork. And I'm a good, you know, it's a length of my arm, that whole way. And that is what we've pulled out of it there. So, shut that there. What's that trial about a foot long, nearly? I'm holding it at a weird angle. So yeah, that's the length of it there that we've dug out. And as we got to the bottom of that one, its mate was starting next to it. And like you said, there's been a few patches of this dotted about all throughout this bed. Uh, well, down there, the, you know, the, it's nice soft compost on top. And then when I get about two thirds of the way down there, that's when it starts getting firm. And it's the firm soil underneath. And like I say, it's just running its way through it. So it's something we're going to have to live with. And yeah, we'll try and manage it as best we can do. Well, yeah, I'm, am I'm amazed it. So I'm amazed it's come through that quick, to be honest. But we keep on top of it. We'll manage it. We're going to try and find a use for it. I'm assuming hundreds of people before me have tried to find a use for it. But you know, hundreds of people invent things that don't happen, and then one person comes along and makes it happen. So hey, maybe we could get lucky and be that one person. But we may as well try doing something with it while we're dealing with it. So, um, yeah, that's my mare's tail adventure on here. Uh, but no, that was what I thought it was mad. I went in, uh, I was in the garden centre the other week and I was looking at the some pond plants from the pond. So, like I said, they've got the iris and the reeds and lilies. And then what was in a pot next to it? Mare's tail. I saw that's horse's tail. Where you could buy it in the garden centre, which I thought was mad. As it's, you know, it's... We see it as an invasive weed, don't we? And uh, yeah, there was the garden centre selling it for seven pound a pot. So you know, maybe I could pot it up and start selling it to all the pond folk. But no, I'm not going to start doing that. By the way, uh, I just want rid of it. But I say we'll never get rid of it. So managing it's the way. I say we'll never get rid of it. So managing it's the way to go with it. So yeah, that's that. Well, that was the nice tail. We're going to say we're going to deal with it. We're gonna see what we can do, but there's not a lot we can do really other than just keeping on top of it. So that's that. And then guys, if you got this far, nice one for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe and all that. And I'll see you in the next one. See you later.